Hey everybody, and welcome to the Everything VoiceOver Podcast. My name is Justin D. Torres. Thank you guys so much for listening. We are coming up on our 21st episode of the Everything VoiceOver Podcast. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't celebrate the 20th episode last uh, last week, but now I, I see 21 as Blackjack, so I figured I'd celebrate that today. Well... <clears throat> Before we get started, I want to say thank you to The Voice Realm, because the Everything VoiceOver podcast is brought to you by The Voice Realm, where only professional voice actors are listed. Now, last week, we talked about what you don't know, and then the items and the uh, the uh, the things that, that people in VO don't really tell you off the bat. We went into sag after scale rates, we went into the large initiation fee for SAG-AFTRA, and, uh, you know, the we tried to blast a couple of those notions of just because you get an agent doesn't mean you actually get the jobs. Um, also, we took on the piece of the pie mentality, and that, that though we are the voice of the campaign, and though we are important, and though we are what the people hear, we aren't exactly the biggest cog in the puzzle of commercials and uh, and and everything else. We are very small, and usually we come in at the end of the process to make it better. And we can usually be replaced. So that's the cool thing about scale is that is that it's uh, is that no matter how many billions of dollars the company has, they only really have to pay you scale. Regardless, they don't have to pay you. It's not like a sliding scale of uh, it, depending on how much money you make as a company is is high, is the amount of uh, percentage. It's it's not like a percentage of your money goes to the voiceover artist. So, anyway, let's uh, let's go ahead and start with uh, part two of the what uh, things that people don't tell you in voiceover. Now, let's take on the big thing that everyone talks about, and that is perpetuity. And you notice how I did a big plus of there. It's perpetuity, a big old P right there. Now, this is a huge difference between non-union and union. Now, what is perpetuity? Well, if someone buys your voice and they say they can use it in perpetuity, that means they can use your voice forever and ever and ever. So if you did a commercial, they can put that commercial on forever. And that's pretty much it. Now, union people, uh, people who joined sag after have a protection against that for certain jobs, mostly television and radio. Those are the big, those are the big two. For film, it's different because, you know, I mean, depending on if a film goes from, goes into, like, syndication or if, like, it gets, gets put into, like, uh, cable TV or something like that, there might be a different kind of stuff for that. But it's really only television and radio. It's tough to get a perpetuity for an audiobook. Or how many people read the audiobook, or, or or listen to the audiobook, or it's hard it's tough to get perpetuities for like a a toy or a sound of a toy or, or even a cartoon kind of thing or a video game. People don't get you know if you did a voice in World of Warcraft, you're not getting more per subscriber. They have that voice and that sound in perpetuity for the most part. Now I could be wrong about certain things if you're a more uh, you know, if you're a really good talent and you've and your agent has negotiated for you to get consistent, consistent more uh, more payments and residuals, then that's great. That's awesome. But you know, they also have contracts in the union side where you can only do jobs for that company for the period of your run. So, like I said, when I did when I did a Dairy Queen spot, I couldn't do any McDonald's spots. Dairy Queen, the residual didn't not only took care of the. Um, the uh, the the pay per the cycle it also took care of uh, took me off of other fast food restaurants um, for a while so that pay, that scale was included in taking and making sure that there was no my voice wasn't on five different fast food things trying to recommend a, a happy meal and then like a Chick Fil A meal and then like a Dairy Queen five buck Chuck meal so and that was paid through you know in scale. Now, non-union jobs don't have that function. So my voice, unfortunately, is going to be on YouTube's forever. They can use it for as many times as they want. All the little little videos and little animations they can use however they want for as long as they want. Now, they, now if they start putting it onto television, then they come into a bit of a bind. But as long as it's on, like, solely internet broadcast, um, uh, they're, they're going to be able to use it for as long as they want. Now, here's the reason why no one tells you about perpetuity and non-union. Now, number one, startups and small business can't tell how videos and intros affect their bottom line. They're usually trying multiple things to try and bring up their bottom line. So they're doing, like, campaigns on the SEO front. They're doing campaigns with, like, 
fundraisers and they're doing videos and they're doing commercials on online and they're doing all these different things to try and get more business so it's tough for you to directly tell that like you can't tell that if uh, if a, a commercial comes out on 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 Spotify or on uh, or if it comes into a YouTube channel and then suddenly this commercial comes out there's no way to tell if that the reason why people are clicking that video is because of the content is it because of the voice? Is it because of the acting? Is it because of the deal that's on there? There's a whole different thing. There's whole. There's many reasons why you can't really you can't really tell uh, how to get a residual from it. Um, now, when it comes to audio games, vi- audio books, and video games, and films, and internet videos, they aren't broadcasted. They just exist. So you know, you really can't get paid, you know, ten cents per view. I mean, they're, if you think about the, the videos that I put up and the videos that everyone else puts up on YouTube that are just free videos, YouTube doesn't pay you per subscriber. I mean, you have to kind of try to figure out a way to funnel that into some kind of commercial ability. Also, non-broadcast commercials like YouTube and Hulu and Spotify, you know, they can tell how many people listen to it, they can tell how many people click the link, and they make money off the click-through rate. So that's what the company is paying for, you know, the click-through rate. That that's they're not the voice is not the one that gets them the uh, gets them the money. They're actually paying for that service to be able to. They're paying Hulu and they're paying YouTube to to put that commercial on there and get a certain amount of clicks back. Now, did they click because of your voice, the content, the music? Who knows? And anyone can put out a video. Any person. It doesn't require a company, it doesn't require an LLC, so they have a right to put a voiceover on their work and put a budget on it and see how it goes. There is no limit to, to people, people's ability to get voiceover. It's just the, the limitation is what voiceover artists are willing to do it. There are certain voiceover artists that t- do things like Fiverr, and they do things like, uh, or they, uh, you know, or, or they're on smaller sites like Voice Bunny, and they will do like these smaller internet things for like 50 bucks or 40 bucks and is it is it uh those huge companies taking advantage of these these smaller vo's or is it just a company that can't afford a good vo and they just are testing out what the what's going on i personally have used fiverr for various things and the reason why i use fiverr for for you know brand brand names or other you know trying to figure out what uh a good animation for my for my YouTube channel, and the reason why I do that is because I'm a small company. I'm not an LLC. I mean, everything voiceover doesn't make any money off of anything, and this is just something that uh, you have to take in consideration. That that um, not everyone is a company. So when people are t- complaining about pay to play sites or they're complaining about people doing on Fiverr doing VO, they're basically complaining about mostly companies who don't who couldn't afford it. And, and they are able to afford a certain type of voiceover. And I'll be honest with you, a Fiverr person or a Voice Bunny person, person is not taking away from the higher-end commercial offerings. There's not an agent who's like, oh, I, I wish Voice Bunny was gone or Fiverr was gone because they're taking all those good jobs away. And And I don't think they should worry about that. Now, I would argue that you know, uh, and now if you think about it, if, you, if you're looking at the percentage of the pie mentality, uh, you're probably getting a higher percentage of what the company is uh, when it comes to a smaller business needing like a la- local radio spot compared to like these huge companies like iHeartRadio needing a spot in a regional area. iHeartRadio is probably a billion dollar company or a multi million dollar company, whereas, you know, Janie's Stationery out on 2nd Street. Is probably a very small company worth a worth a couple of thousand dollars on a regular basis, and your percentage is probably much better. Your hundred dollar or fifty dollar job is a much higher percentage of the entire company of Janie Stationery versus the uh, percentage of a union person getting off of a of a Nike spot. So. So when people complain about the pieces of the pie, or like you're not getting a you're not getting a specific amount of the entire budget, I don't know what they're comparing about because because when it comes to like larger larger companies, they're definitely not giving you a huge piece of the pie. Now, okay, that was the big thing about perpetuity, 
And and here's here's the other interesting thing. What's ended up happening nowadays, and it always has happened for the for the most part. But with when it comes to recent recent uh, recent VO recent years, um, a lot of the higher end commercials for VO are going to known known uh, actors. So you'll hear stuff like Morgan Freeman. You'll hear people like Brad Pitt. You'll hear George Clooney a lot. You'll hear Leonardo DiCaprio. You'll hear all these people you know on a lot of the, of their a lot of VO. Now this is unfortunate because this is actually this is actually more so taking away from the the quote unquote union jobs because when you see a lot of sites and people talking about people people talking about the 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 voiceover pros and whatnot a lot of them are union. I mean to call yourself a pro, a lot of them are union. They're probably not. They're probably doing the union jobs, and they should be scared. Because, you know, uh, and uh, an actor, when when someone creates a spot and they're like, we need Morgan Freeman, they're going to pay, they're not going to pay a scale rate. They're going to pay what Morgan Freeman wants. And that's going to be a huge part of the puzzle. So, so it's not the pay to play, pay to play sites are affecting the industry, but us, there's a million other things. And people don't really talk about it because how can you complain about a company wanting a voice that's known? How can you complain about that? You can't. You can't just say you can't. You can't complain about it because, unfortunately, they're they're figuring out that you know maybe there are voices that are so ingrained in people's minds that you want to take advantage of that, and that's okay. In the same way that there were certain voices that back in the '80s were constantly in everything. And they were able to take advantage of that and make more and more money because people wanted to hear their voices over and over again. And the good thing about that is that if you are successful in voiceover, you will eventually be able to do to get bigger and bigger, bigger jobs as long as you are more, as long as you get better and better at the task, at the task at hand. And also, you know, people start recognizing your the sound of your voice. Now, um, here's here's what I now here's what I like to call the big unknown uh, when it comes to things people don't tell you about voiceover. I saw a YouTube channel recently where it was a man ranting about pay-to-play sites. Believe me, that's I, I look at that a lot. I try and I try and understand what other people say about pay-to-play sites, and the majority of the time it ends up being the same old riff, unfortunately. And this guy had an angry face on it, and he was like, actually, but it was weird because, like, when he actually did the video, he was very calm and very nice about it, and, and it was actually very informative. But it was pretty much the same complaints about pay to play sites. They're taking our money, they don't give you any insurance, they use your voice forever, they're taking 50%, whereas, you know, they're only supposed to take 10%, and they, uh, they're, they're running, they're running it like a business, which is, which is, <laughs> I don't know, how else are you supposed to run a business? Or they ne- and then then like the concept of you, you never pay for auditions. You never pay for auditions. And I totally understand that. If you're a pro and you've already got a system where things are going really well for you, you you don't want people to to not have that option. If they've had the ability to uh, pay for their insurance and get a lot of jobs through agents, and they forged their entire path through marketing, and they've got networked themselves in, and they're doing really well, then they want everyone to do that. And I totally understand that. But Unfortunately, they weren't raised in the world that we are today, where, you know, there are other options. Now, now this guy put up his video, and I watched it, and I, did, I didn't post on it, and I don't really try and use negative responses to anything, because, honestly, it puts a target on your back if you like any pay-to-play site. And, and I feel like I'm one of the only voices out there trying to be like, hey, the, the pay-to-play sites exist for people like me, and who are, who are trying to get into voiceover to the highest level, and, and trying to make money, and trying to live off of voiceover, because I have every right to exist as well as you do. So I didn't respond exactly, but someone did, and uh, presumably a, a non-union person. And he posted, uh, uh, and he said, you know, I make my living off these sites like this. And he said, and he cited his reasons, whether it be location, or he couldn't get an agent, or he's still just trying. But he says, I, I actually make my living off these sites. And how do you recommend if you don't, if you're a non-union person, how do you, you know, what do you think we should do, considering? And the author said in response, 
And this was a, this was crazy to me. This was crazy. He said that this was aimed mostly toward union actors who moonlight as non-union and use these sites to supplement their income. Now I was floored. First of all, I was kind of pissed off because the the video itself said nothing about that. It said nothing about the the target audience was that. But I do understand if that would make me pissed as well, if then that actually does make me pissed off that there are union actors taking money away from non-union actors. I mean, the whole point of joining the union is so that you can get to the the point where you're going to get the piece of the the uh, voiceover pie that's the best of the best. So why would you stoop so low as to take from other uh, actors who are trying to get to the point where they're good enough to get into the union? And and I've heard of it happening. I've heard of it happening in other places and other unions. But I assumed that, that not very many people were doing it. But, according to this author of this thing, he said that, you know, there are, this is mostly aimed toward them. People who are just, you know, undercutting their own rate, who know what it's like to be a union actor, who knows what they need to do. And apparently there are so few jobs available for sag after members that they have to dip into non-union pool to, to, and, and end up taking it from uh, the non-union actor. Now, uh, this whole argument, the other argument, is that non-union has taken over and stolen all the union jobs. Now, from my perspective, I have almost never auditioned for a national job through a pay-to-play site. They are a rarity. I have auditioned for big jobs where, where, where there were a lot of money involved, but when it came down to it, the amount of stuff that they were asking for and the amount of work and the amount of, uh, you know, the amount of spots, it, it kind of worked out. And it was like, okay, I'm paying for, the, they're paying for the large amount of money they, they are paying for is for my voice to be able to utilize it for X amount of time, for a longer amount of time than like eight weeks. Uh, but they want for a uh, big, they want me to be able to provide high quality uh, jobs and be able to do pickups on the fly and rewrites on the fly. But but it's a rarity. These big union jobs that apparently we're stealing from everyone is a total rarity. Now, when I was with my agency, I was always auditioning for national jobs or regional jobs. And then a few audiobooks for home. Now, now, um, now that's, you know, that was just life for now. Uh, now would be a really good time to say that uh, the voice, uh, the Everything VoiceOver podcast is brought to you by the Voice Realm, where only professional voice actors are listed. So this guy was actually, you know, he was he was pissed off about something entirely different than what I was, what I assume. Because whenever I see someone talking about pay-to-play sites, I assume they're they're trying to talk to all the non-union people out there who are not using agents or who are not who are using home studios to make money. But the the concept that their union actors are doing this as well, with just taking non-union jobs away, was very interesting. And, you know, the big question comes up is who is to blame? Now, according to the most of the Facebook sites, Facebook groups, you know, the pay-to-play sites are, the, are to blame. But, you know, and that's true in, in certain certain aspects. There may be companies that were just on the edge of being able to afford commercial stuff. And they were like, you know, I probably want to try and use the non-union for a bit longer until we start making, still we make until we make a five, Fortune 500 company. Uh, who knows? And that's a possibility. There's definitely logic would say that there are some of these companies, you know, taking advantage of, of non-union sites because because it's cheaper. Now, but there is blame elsewhere, and you can't you can't just say it's one thing that causes this. You know, you could blame union voiceover actors who moon moonlight as non-union because they are providing perceived union quality stuff to to uh, to companies. You know, whereas they should probably be going through your agent to get the union jobs to you. Or you could you could blame the union that charges that charges three thousand dollars for initiation and provides less than half of their members with health insurance. Now that's not a statistic that I'm 100% sure about, and I don't want to say that that's true. To say that that's 100% true, I've been looking around for a statistic on it. But when it, well, the few voiceover actors I have, I have talked to, including agents that I've talked to, have said that you know it's not very many of voiceover actors are able to make their health insurance, and the few that I know that do make 
enough for health insurance. They also do TV and film, and they also do background work to try and get those extra hours in. Now, you could blame non-union talent for continuing for continuing to find ways to do voiceover if they're not living in New York City, or they're continuing to find ways to do voiceover if they don't have an agency, or they, they're, they're continuing to do voiceover even though they're not networked in good enough, or even good enough yet. But you know who I blame? I don't blame anybody. We're all just figuring it out. I don't begrudge a single person person for figuring out how they do voiceover. If you're killing it on Fiverr, more power to you. You are my peer. You are my colleague. If you're doing commercial VO stuff for the Super Bowl, you are my peer. You are my colleague, and I am happy for you. If you are moonlighting uh, as a non-VO artist and you are union VO, you are my peer. You are my colleague, and I hope things get better in the union aspect so that you can go back to union. And it sucks that, the, that it's been so hard that you have to supplement your income by doing that. And if you are just starting out, you have my support. You have everything voiceovers support. And we're going to try and give you ideas to help you get moving. And, and here's the last little thing I like to say before we end off the, the thing. Uh, the, uh, what they don't tell you about voiceover. Um... I would be wary, now this is what they don't tell you about this, about voiceovers, like, I would be very wary about anyone who tries to sell you any kind of advice that comes with payment, or any kind of coaching, if it comes from a voiceover actor. Now that's tough, because I am a voiceover actor, and I'm giving away free advice here in my podcast, and everything voiceovers from a voiceover actor perspective. I'm talking about when it comes in the form of sign up for my class or do my thing, or if it comes in the form of a sponsored Facebook message, or if it comes in the the form of, you know, you put up, hey, are there any good voiceover coaches? And then people start, start, uh, start putting their own selves as, hey, I coach. I, unfortunately, we are in a, a place where there are a lot of voiceover actors who aren't making enough money. And as they're not making enough money, they do know how to do voiceover. And in an effort to try and make money off voiceover, by not doing voiceover, they may offer services, and they may offer coaching services, or they may offer a PDF, or they may offer a book. And the unfortunate thing about that, I, I dislike that process. I know that if I wanted to, I could coach, but I also feel very, I feel bad because I don't have a networked in. Like I'd love to be able to coach a couple of people and be able to say, oh, uh, at the end of it, be like, here's an agent that is actually looking for voiceover talent that I think that we're going to have them listen to us. Because I think that's that's a good thing to have, to have people get a shot at at being in an agency or ha- get a shot at being critiqued by an actual agent or a casting director, you know? There has to be some kind of payoff at the end. Now, uh, now that's not to say that everything's a ripoff. I do not want to say it. There's some plenty of good voiceover coaches, and there's some really good, very specific, uh, awesome things to be a part of. I personally can vouch for Pat Fraley. He's a great coach. Dorian Elliott, a casting director that's a great coach. And, and there's also like this, uh, there's also a plan, there's also specific, um, classes like for how to market for e-learning or how to do specific audiobooks. And I think those are great when it's very specific and it's like, you want to learn a specific skill. That's so cool. So like, if you got a class for like audacity, if you got a class for reaper, that's, that's great. I totally am on board, but it's when it's like, uh, figure, you know, how to uh, how to be a voiceover star or how to make money off your voice when it's generalized i would just say now this is what people don't tell you is that you know there's a lot of voiceover actors trying to screw over a lot of other voiceover actors and it pisses me off because you know here we are getting all up in arms about a pay to play site and i tell you and i tell you this 100% honesty 110% honesty i have been a part of voices.com this specific site for over four or five years, and they have done nothing but provide good service and given me the ability to make money off of voiceover and to provide me the ability to say I am a voiceover actor. And I can say that. 
I can walk the entire, I know I've made enough money to live on. I know I've made more than enough money to take vacations on. I know that I've made enough money to pay rent. And I know I have enough money in the bank to be okay with my life. So I can say that I'm a voiceover professional. So when people talk about those sites, I just honestly say, you know, you don't know who these people are. And, you know, on this, on the one hand, they can talk about this one site that's, that, that is suddenly the devil when, you know, if you look around, you know, we'll look for the people who are, who are the loudest and check their website, see if they offer coaching and stuff like that. Why would you bring down an opportunity? Would, do they, do they intentionally tell the people they coach that they can't do pay to play sites when, you know, you know, would they say, just, just start spending your money on marketing? No, don't spend your money on marketing. You don't know how to market. None of us, there's very few, you know, there's very few things. If you look at voiceover marketing, there's very few classes even out there that are, that are, that are going to tell you what you need to do. All right, anyway, I'm sorry, I got a little negative at the end there, but I do have, you know, I, people don't tell you that there's a lot of voiceover actors trying to get money out of other voiceover actors, and I think that's sad, and, I, and it pains me, and it doesn't seem very supportive. And I think that, you know, I think that information should be just information. And if you're a good coach, I think you should be able to say, hey, I am a good coach. All my students have gone on to, gone on to be with this agency, and I try and get them into that agency. This agency uh, sees all my students. We meet them. They get in through that way. You know, or like if you look at Pat Fraley, he does an audiobook uh, workshop thing that's very costly and over the weekend. But in the end, you get a demo, and I have have it on personal things. If you if you if you uh, listen to the Lisa Flanagan episode, she has she got she she got linked up with multiple audiobook agents because of that class. And I'm like, yes, yes. Absolutely. If you if if you provide a service and on top of that service you actually try and get your students success in voiceover, then I am on board. But it's just everyone else, you know, who the people who don't give you the information of what they what they can do for you. You know, this don't give any money away because this is what no one tells you about. Don't give any money away to voiceover actors unless they have come extremely recommended and they've come and they have actually done some help for voiceover actors. There's plenty of people who are like, it was a great class. And I took, and I actually taught a class uh, for voiceovers conference. And what I tried to do was I made sure that I, I at least gave people the skill to edit before they left. That was the number one thing. And then I did a bunch of like the critiques of, of auditions to try and get people up and, and reading. But, you know, there's only so much you can do. So, in conclusion... I'm just trying to bring up facts that surprised me as I got closer to being a union. And then when I started getting success as a non-union actor, all the things that happened afterwards. So don't let, once again, don't let anyone tell you you are right or wrong in anything you try in your path to being a voiceover actor. Everything voiceover, my, uh, we, my site and the podcast itself is just advice. That's it. I'm coming uh, from this perspective as myself, and I try and bring on people and talk about their perspective, and every path is very different. And if you're successful in vo voiceover, you know, that could be because of pay-to-play sites. That could be because of an agency. That could be because of self-marketing. Anything. You can be successful. Try different things. Don't let anyone tell you you can't try certain things. Enjoy it. Enjoy the process. You can do this. All right, so I hope that wasn't too negative for you guys. I, at the end there, I just wanted to add in that last bit about uh, about you know this this concept of the, you know trying to make more money off voiceover actors that are around you. But thank you guys so much for listening. Once again, the Everything Voiceover Podcast is brought to you by the Voice Realm, where only professional voice actors are listed. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, please shoot ahead, be sure to head to everythingvoiceover.com and check us out there. Check out all of our videos and articles there. Or go ahead and follow us on Twitter at EverythingV. Um, other than that, thank you guys so much for listening. We're going to try and keep going. As, as, as long as there are listeners out there, we will try and give you as much information about voiceover as we can. Thank you guys for listening. Have a great night. <laughs>